Shortcomings of the European Regulatory Pesticide Risk Assessment for Surface Waters from Anja Knebel and Sebastian Steele. The talk is divided in three major chapters. In the introduction, we give the rationale for the European Regulatory Risk Assessment and briefly describe the pesticide authorization in the European Union. The second part focuses on the exposure and effect assessment and shows how the actual risk is estimated. At the end of the talk, we discuss shortcomings related to the pesticide risk assessment on the basis of actual field data. There are several reasons why pesticides need a specific regulatory risk assessment compared to other chemicals. Pesticides are intentionally applied to considerably proportions of the European landscape. They are applied in large quantities several times per year and most important, pesticides are highly biologically active chemicals designed to harm organisms. These characteristics and their widespread application to the environment potentially leads to the exposure of non-target ecosystems like surface waters during and after application to agricultural areas. When pesticides enter agricultural surface waters, they can cause direct effects like for example motility of aquatic organisms. Furthermore, Pesticides can also lead to indirect effects, for example, due to the disturbance of predator-prey interaction. Another important factor for pesticides, which are persistent and lipophilic, is the biomagnification along the food chain. A substance which is accumulated in higher trophic levels can also influence human health, for example, due to the consumption of fish. There are many pesticide legislations and regulations in the European Union dealing with human health and the environment. The most important regulation is the Regulation 1107-2009, which replaced the Directive 91-414. The aim of the regulation is to ensure a safe use of pesticides and to prevent harmful effects on human health and the environment. All pesticides have to be evaluated before they are authorized for agricultural use in the European Union. Overall, the regulatory environmental risk assessment should ensure that the agricultural pesticide use has no unacceptable effects on the terrestrial and aquatic environment. This talk concentrates on the environmental risk assessment and especially on aquatic ecosystems. Generally, the pesticide environmental risk assessment consists of an exposure assessment to predict the pesticide concentration in different environmental compartments and an effect assessment to evaluate the toxicity to non-target organisms. Both sides of pesticide environmental risk assessment are explained in detail on the next slides. The risk assessment follows a tiered approach. Tier 1 is very conservative, which means that for example worst case assumptions are made and large assessment factors are employed. For pesticides which fail Tier 1, the progress from lower tier to higher tier risk assessment is necessary. The higher risk assessment tiers are characterized by increasing realism and complexity and a simultaneous decreasing standardization and conservatism. We will now take a closer look on the pesticide exposure assessment, which is done using computer models to predict environmental pesticide concentrations. There are several reasons why the exposure assessment uses modeling instead of field monitoring data. First and most important, there is no other possibility for new substances which are not yet on the market. Nevertheless, even for substances in readmission, it is much more cost and time effective to use exposure modeling. In addition, computer models are standardized, which make it possible for re registration authorities to retrace and reproduce the results. Furthermore, computer models allow extrapolating to other use patterns or environmental conditions. When a pesticide is applied to an agricultural field with an adjacent surface water body, 
like for example a small stream or ditch. There are several ways for the pesticide to enter the surface water system. In the regulatory exposure modeling, only diffuse or non-point source pollution is considered. During the application, relevant amounts of the pesticide can reach the water body by spray drift. After the application and subsequently to heavy precipitation events, the pesticide can also be moved directly by surface runoff or leaching to file drains into the surface water. The relevant exposure values are named Predicted Environmental Concentrations, abbreviated PEC, and are calculated separately for the water and the sediment phase. The modeling approach, which is currently used in the European Union, was introduced in 1997 from the Focus Surface Water Working Group. The tiered approach consists of four different steps. Step 1 is very simple and is based on unrealistic worst case assumptions. Step 3 is generally the most important step in the exposure assessment and it is based on realistic worst case assumptions due to the inclusion of actual soil and climate data. For the subsequent step 4 there are several options like the refinement of input parameters or the inclusion of mitigation options. The focus working group claims that the highest relevant step 3 pack predicts in the 90th percentile worst case field concentration. The effect assessment generally differentiates between acute and chronic effects. In tier 1, standard toxicity tests in the laboratory are conducted with algae, daphnia and fish. The relevant toxicity endpoints are for example the percentage of mortality after 96 hours in the case of fishes. The median effect or lethal concentration is mathematically determined and used as an endpoint in the risk assessment. In addition, large safety factors are used in the tier 1 effect assessment to cover uncertainties. If the tier 1 risk assessment indicates that there is an unacceptable environmental risk, one has to proceed to higher tier effect assessment. In the higher tier effect assessment, there are different possibilities to increase realism and reduce the uncertainty. For example, toxicity tests with additional species are carried out to create species sensitivity distribution. Another possibility is to conduct ecotoxicological tests with aquatic organisms in semi-field model ecosystems, like micro or mesocosms, which are shown in the picture below. These studies consider recovery and optionally recolonization processes. The higher realism, the reduced uncertainty and the increased ecosystem relevance of higher tier effect studies allows the reduction of the assessment factors, which are set on the case-by-case -case decision. The final aim of the regulatory effect assessment is the determination of a regulatory acceptable concentration. This is the concentration at which transient effects are allowed, which, however, are assumed to be ecologically acceptable. The actual environmental risk assessment is conducted by a combination of the outcomes of the exposure and effect assessments. Toxicity exposure ratios are calculated by dividing the toxicity values, which are the outcome of tier 1 or higher tier effect assessment, and the exposure value, or exactly the PEC, which is the outcome of the exposure assessment. The environmental risk is assumed to be acceptable if the toxicity exposure ratio is larger than the assessment factor. This means that the environmental risk assessment is passed and the authorization of the respective pesticide compound is possible. If the toxicity exposure ratio is smaller than the assessment factor, the risk is not acceptable and a higher tier risk assessment, which includes for example application restrictions, has to be conducted. If the toxicity exposure ratio of the higher tier risk assessment is still smaller than the assessment factor, no authorization can be granted. There are shortcomings in the regulatory risk assessment which can result in an underestimation of the actual risk for the environment or human health. The protectiveness and efficiency of the regulatory risk assessment can be evaluated using field data, which are pesticide concentrations measured in surface waters after pesticide applications. 
There are numerous incidences, for example in the scientific literature, which show that actual pesticide concentrations detected in surface waters exceed predicted environmental concentrations and regulatory acceptable concentrations. This indicates substantial ecological risk for aquatic organisms, which are not covered and not known by the environmental pesticide risk assessment, and therefore question the protectiveness of the regulatory environmental risk assessment. Possible reasons for the exceedance of packs or rugs by field concentrations are on the one hand the failure of exposure assessment and pack calculation, and on the other hand the farmer's ignorance of application prescriptions, like no spray buffer zones. Overall, a failure of the environmental risk assessment can lead to substantial threats to the environment and to human health, for example through the contamination of drinking water or biomagnifications. To analyze the magnitude of the failure of the exposure assessment, we conducted a study which evaluated the focus modeling approach. We used 122 measured insecticide concentrations from different substance classes and calculated pack concentrations for every single field concentration, with focus step 1 to focus step 4. 77 water phase concentrations and 45 sediment concentrations were extracted from scientific studies in which the authors measured pesticide concentrations in agricultural surface water bodies. The results of the study are shown here. The figure shows the relationship between measured and predicted insecticide concentrations for the different focus steps. The black dots show the concentration in water phase and the white dots show the sediment concentrations. The 45 degree line, which is red in this figure, denotes the one-to-one -one relationship. Dots on this line means that the measured and predicted concentrations are exactly the same. For dots over the red line, the predicted concentration is higher than the measured. The most important dots are the ones under the red line, because in these cases the measured concentration is higher than the simulated, which means that the model underestimates the actual field concentration. We will now have a closer look on the results of step 3, because this is the most important step in the exposure assessment. The figure again shows the relationship between measured and predicted concentrations. All dots in the red area shows the cases in which the measured concentrations are higher than the predicted concentrations, and therefore the model underestimates the actual field concentration. In our study, 23% of the measured water phase insecticide concentrations were underpredicted by the model. This in consequence means that for all these concentrations the regulatory exposure assessment failed and that potentially adverse environmental effects did occur in the field. In conclusion, the aim of the regulatory risk assessment for pesticides is to ensure a safe use for human health and the environment. The environmental risk estimation is done using a deterministic approach by comparing exposure and effect. The occurrence of field concentrations higher than exposure and effect values indicates that there are shortcomings in the regulatory process, which leads to an underestimation of the actual risk in the field. This in consequence might also influence the human health through, for example, contamination of drinking waters and food like fishes.